The King has uh, delegated today's sermon to um, Dr. Richard Panzer, the president of Order Peace Unification Sanctuary in North America. And so let me turn the microphone over to him. Sunday school, Sunday school is dismissed. Thank you, Tim. I just want you all to know I'm wearing real socks. Okay? Okay? Just want you to know. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I guess I have to broadcast this. Hey, let me just uh, give you a little uh, heads up here. Uh, so, Hyunjin and Mass me to report on Hak Jahan's deposition. Okay, so I feel like I am the coroner or the, uh, I'm doing the work of a coroner to report on a, like a dead body or something, but I, so, but there are different ways to look at things, okay? The, the Bible actually is full of not just wonderful, inspiring, hopeful news. The Bible is very honest, isn't that true? And so it's incredibly honest. And I often think, well, if the Bible were just propaganda, they would leave out all these bad parts, <laughs> which are pretty disturbing parts. I mean, uh, even about people who are very important central figures. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today, OK? And, and I, before I start, I'd, I'd just like to say something. Uh, particularly to brothers and sisters from Family Fed who may be watching this too. The, for, for many, many, many years and decades, I, and I think met all of us, loved and respected Hak Jahan. Because I never thought, I, if anyone had come to me and said, oh, the, she's not united with father, or the, there's something wrong going on, I, I would have said, are you smoking something? Yeah. I mean, I, I would have just said, what are you talking about? Right. I, I mean, it, it was just unconceivable, unbelievable. So, but as we know from the Bible and divine principle, all of us need to view our responsibility with fear and trembling. Anybody, Anybody can make a mistake, and we have to be very, Father has said that many times. He said, in a moment, you can be, your, your, your life can be destroyed, right? You think, you know, even in the public, you, know, you can see people who spend decades of their life maybe trying to serve the nation and serve the world, and in one, one moment, it was all destroyed. Right? I could give you examples, but I don't, you understand, right? So it, it is a lesson for us. And also for, I know we have a lot of uh, new brothers and sisters who, uh, you, you know, you've come to Sanctuary Church in the last year or so. And I'll be talking about uh, not ancient history, but, but, but previous history. And for some of you, it may be puzzling, but I, I, I hope that you can, you can understand more about the victory of our second king and how he overcame so many, so many um, obstacles that he should never have had to deal with. And I'm going to say something else here. Some of you don't like his crown of bullets, OK? <laughs> Is, uh, you're watching. I know, I know, of course I know. I myself, when I first saw it, I say, what is that? <laughs> what is that? You know, and I, I was wondering about it. But I think what we need to understand is that family fed brothers and sisters and, uh, and his mother, you put the crown of bullets on his head. You put that crown on his head that he never should have had to wear. But he's wearing that in order to accomplish and start from scratch. That's all I'm going to say. You can think about it. OK? OK. So 
Let's get into it. All right, let me, uh, here we go. Okay, I, I think all of you know, especially those who are, you have been studying divine principle, Genesis 128 talks about the three great blessings, right? And so what are the three great blessings? Number one is growing to maturity in our relationship with God, right? Per perfecting or maturing our relationship, personal relationship with God, right? That's first blessing. And then the second blessing has to do with a mature man and a mature woman coming together to start a blessed family that's in God's lineage, right? And then number three has to do with God's blessing of dominion over the creation and having ownership and being able to invest in something and create something during your lifetime on earth, okay? So those are three blessings, right? Okay, let me grab my clicker here. All right. Okay, now we, unfortunately we all know that God's original purpose of creation, it didn't quite go the way that God had hoped. Um, you know, God gives us a portion of responsibility because he wants us to become lords of creation. If God creates us without free will, then we're, we're basically on the same level as, as animals that just have instinct, right? But God wants to have a love relationship with us, so without freedom, there's no love, if you think about it, right? So, so what happened in the garden? Uh, God gave a word. God, God said to his children, Adam, and then Adam told Eve, you can do whatever you want in the garden, but there's this one tree that you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, eat from that fruit. And of course, I think we, you're studying divine principle, we know what that fruit actually means. It's not a real fruit. It has something to do with, with love, right? So I don't want you to experience this at this time, okay? Wait until I give you permission, okay? Now, unfortunately, there was somebody who was really smart, really brilliant, really uh, trusted by God, that God trusted to guide and help raise up Adam and Eve, and the Bible says that his name was Lucifer, right? And Lucifer began to uh, Lucifer began to see that you know Adam and Eve were getting a lot of love from 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 God, and he could see that they were meant to be have the, a very central position in the world. And he felt a lack of love. He felt jealous, and unfortunately, he had give and take with these feelings. And he began to uh, decided to come up with his own plan, you could say. And his plan involved talking to, to God's daughter, Eve, and saying, you know what? Maybe God didn't really mean what he said about this, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know? You know, really, actually, if you, if you eat from that tree, then you'll be wise like God. You know, so it seems like God is kind of trying to prevent you from experiencing something that you should experience. I mean, look, he was smart. He had like 10 PhDs, and, you know, he was really a clever guy, okay? So, unfortunately, Eve listened to him. And, and became intimate with him. And, and then she, so she fell. And then, then she, and then she realized after that experience, she was actually cut off from God at that point, And she felt fear. And then she saw that Adam was still 
unfallen, still experiencing God's love. And then she, she went to Adam and she tempted him. And, and unfortunately, he, instead of staying in his position, he actually went along with, with Eve. So they both came under Satan's dominion, okay? Now, we can see from looking at this uh, diagram, think about this. If Adam had been able to remain faithful to God and, and, and stand on God's words to him, then even though Eve had fallen, God could have worked through Adam to, re to help her, to restore her, uh, or if that was not possible, to send an another bride for, you know, to be with Adam, right? And God, the, we would not have to experience this miserable history of mass murder and all kinds of horrible things that have happened. And if you think about it, the, the, the history of the human race has been a history of men and women hurting each other and making each other really sad, and, 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 and it, it comes from this. So, uh, you know, our world, anyway, that's like a whole other topic, perhaps, but just the, the world's been waiting for a, a true Adam, right? A true Adam to come that will absolutely stand on God's truth and God's words, and th using, starting from there, the world can be restored. And that's what happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus came as the second Adam, and he was bringing, proclaiming the kingdom of God on earth. Unfortunately, my ancestors were not able to understand him very well. The people who should have helped him did not really help him, and he, at the end, he was forced to go the way of the cross, okay? And he promised to come back. Now think about this. Why, why does Jesus need to come back? He already came 2,000 years ago. He already proclaimed God's truth. He already was victorious as God's son. Why does he need to come back? He needs to come back to restore the three blessings, right? If the three blessings are not important, then Jesus does not need to come back. That's why he's coming back. All right. Okay. So, and we've already spoken about why God did not intervene in the fall. Okay, so that, with that introduction, oh, I, I, one more thing I want to discuss before we get to deposition. I just want to talk very quickly about victorious women in the Bible. So, first, there, uh, I mean, there are many. I can't talk about all of them, but the very important was Rebecca, right? Rebecca, the Father actually talks about this uh, in the World Scripture book. Rebecca risked her life too, actually, to guide Jacob. J you know, Esau, he was a great hunter, but he, he didn't really care that much about God's words or God's traditions. So God revealed to Rebecca that Jacob was the, the son, the anointed son that would carry on the lineage. And she risked her life to help him too. Okay, so she, number, that's the first one. And then second, uh, Father spoke many times about Tamar. Tamar also risked her life to, I think you all know that uh, Judah, I believe his oldest son was married to Tamar, and, and he died, right? And then, so according to Jewish uh, custom, then the second son is supposed to take her as uh, uh, as a bride, and then the children would be carrying the lineage of the older son. But the second son died, all right? So then Judah got nervous and thought, okay, this, this woman is bad, bad luck. And he promised that the youngest son would, be, would, would, would 
be her husband when he became old enough, but that never happened. But God revealed to Tamar that she had to have children, and so she risked her life. And uh, there's a quite amazing story, uh, uh, which you can read in the Bible. These are some kind of the uh, sca scandalous stories in the Bible that, <laughs> that actually God is working through. So she also risked her life, to, and, and actually Jesus is in the lineage of, of her offspring, right? Okay, so that's another one. And then there's Ruth. Ruth, she wasn't Jewish, but she, uh, her husband passed away, but she loved her mother-in-law, I believe, Naomi, right? And uh, so anyway, anyway, that she was noticed uh, by Boaz and became uh, his bride and, and actually Jesus in the lineage of Ruth, okay? And then there's Hannah. Hannah, who uh, couldn't have children and was miserable about that, but she really prayed to God. And then God said, you will have a son and you shall call him Samuel. And uh, Samuel anointed King David, David as king, okay? David was a son, the youngest of, I think, what, eight brothers? I think there were eight, eight brothers. Maybe he was the eighth brother. And n nobody thought that David was, I mean, he was taking care of the sheep, basically. No one thought he was, you know, his older brothers were great warriors and so on. But uh, we know that God anointed David, and uh, he's in the lineage of Jesus, too. Okay? And then there's Esther, who risked her life to save her, the, her people from being mass murdered. Uh, and um, so that's, that's another, and, and, and when, when we say that she saved the, her people, her people were the people that God wanted to send G Christ to. So she saved God, the people, her, but it wasn't just her people, she was saving the lineage of Jesus Christ. Okay, don't forget that, okay. And then number six, uh, Mary, she risked her life, right? To give birth to Jesus, and uh, she did something extremely scandalous at that time in order to give birth to the Messiah, right? And then finally, there's Mary Magdalene. It was very interesting, you know, after Jesus was crucified and, uh, you know, the disciples are completely devastated and, and just in shock and horror, then Mary went to the tomb. She just wanted to be close to Jesus, and she went to the tomb and she encountered the resurrected Jesus. And, and, I, and I want to ask you, why, why was the first person on earth that Jesus revealed himself to Mary? And I, I would say it's because she loved him the most. That's why Jesus revealed himself to her first. Okay, so anyway, these are seven women who I, I, I think are pretty clear. They are amazing, amazing women that God used, right? Amen. Amen. Can we give them a hand? Amen. All right. When, when, when you go to the spirit world, you can have coffee with them and find out how, it, how they did it. Okay. Okay. Now here we have uh, the wife of true father, Sam Young Moon, for many, many, many decades, Hak Jahan. And uh, it, I, I, part of me in talking about this deposition, uh, I feel like I, I'm doing something I really do not want to do. Okay, I really don't want, I don't really like saying things about someone that I respected 
for many, many years of my life, okay? But we have to tell the truth, particularly because it affects God's providence, okay? So I just, I hope you understand. I, I don't like saying anything bad. I, I, I wish I didn't have to talk about this, but we have to understand what actually has happened, okay? All right. Okay, so now we're going to go through the deposition, and I want to give thanks to, to Joe Gaval, uh, our brother in South Jersey. He did a lot of work going through this deposition, so I really want to thank him. And we've posted, uh, there are two documents posted on uh, the Sanctuary website, on the commentary page, and you can download it. There's two PDF files, so there are about 20 pages. And it's shocking, but you can you can read it. Okay, let's go let's go through this. So I, I'm not going to go through everything because it would just be too much. But uh, all right, we're starting with page 88 and 89. She, she states, Hyunjin and ran away to the United States. I did not send him away. He voluntarily went. Is that true? Okay, what really happened? Uh, Hak Jahan had him f fired from five different church positions in Korea, and then she directed him to go to America to serve as the president of the American church after Injunum had to step down. And then he, he was uh, in that position for several months he established church councils where brothers and sisters could vote for their own leaders and make decisions about finances. He was teaching about absolute sex, which father is a core message. Uh, and, but then she fired him from, from uh, his positions here in America. So she's actually saying something that is not true. All right. And, uh, to me, I mean, I think honesty is an important quality, I think. All right, let's keep on going. All right, on page 89, uh, she states, therefore, Father God was not alone. He created everything according to, in the likeness of his image and to perish in the, in the mineral world or animal world and humanity. And then, actually, uh, Tim Elder was there during this deposition, and uh, he said she's not finished. Creation cannot occur with just father alone. There has to be mother. It's imperative. So she's saying creation cannot occur with just the father, God, alone. There has to be God, the mother. All right? Now, uh, this is a kind of a new theology. Uh, I, I did not read this in the Divine Principle book, uh, but uh, let's take a look. OK, what does the Bible say? Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Romans 1, 20. For his invisible attributes, namely his, his eternal power and, and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Okay, now you have to understand that the ancient world, the ancient world, you look at all the religions in the near, the Near East, Middle East, all of those religions spoke about creation through sexual intercourse between male and female gods. They all spoke about that. And it was kind of logical, you know, they, they want to have productivity and crops growing. So they thought, well, the, the, the gods created through intercourse and uh, th that's how they conceived of the creation of the world, actually. And they made sacrifices of various types, including child sacrifice, to 
appease the gods, okay? But that's how they conceived of the creation of the world. Now, if we look at the uh, OSDP, uh, Tim Elder's going through, I, I really recommend that. Uh, he started on Saturday, he'll be start, go, starting again uh, tomorrow. L let's look at this uh, slide based on the OSDP. And Hyunjim has spoken about this issue, by the way, the dual nature of God. So th there are two dual characteristics of God. Okay, so the first one is male and female. Is that what the OSDP says? Is that true? First is male and female. And they had like a intercourse and then they created stuff. Okay, okay, if I stay in this heresy, I'll be flunked by Tim Elder, so. <laughs> No, that's not, the, that's not what the principle says, okay? Okay. What OSDP and Unification Thought says very clearly is the primary nature of God is internal character and external form. Okay, internal character means intellect, emotion, will, heart. God is a being of consciousness, okay? That's a primary, and then external form is God's power and energy, basically, right? Okay, that's the primary nature of God. And then each of those aspects, internal character has masculinity and femininity, or yang and yin, and the external form has yang and yin as well. So, it's not correct, the, the idea of saying that there's a father God and a mother God is not, it's not father's teaching. You're not understanding what father actually said, okay? Within God's nature, uh, intellect, emotion, will, you, there, there are masculine and feminine aspects to that but it doesn't mean that there are two gods, okay? There's one God, do we all agree with that? Yes. Okay, th there's not, I mean, if you think about it, if there were two gods, it would be kind of, conf well, it would actually be convenient, actually. I mean, honestly speaking, if you wanna create a new religion, think about this for a second. If there are two gods, then if you don't, if you don't like what God A, a says, you can just go to God B and you might get a better deal, okay? So actually, I could see why people might be attracted to that. But it has nothing to do with the Bible. It has nothing to do with, with Father's teaching. And uh, brothers and sisters in Family Fed, you need to look at this issue. The primary dual characteristics are what we just said. Look it up. Okay, just saying, all right. Okay, let's go back to the deposition. On page uh, 101, she says, until the Reverend Moon met me, we cannot say that he did not have original sin. Okay, I, I mean, I'm sorry I didn't know this. I, I, I mean, I, okay, here we go. Because I was born without the original sin, that's why I am the only begotten daughter. That is why God saved me. Okay, this is a new revelation that uh, Father never spoke about, and I guess he was wrong, because Father said the exact opposite of this. So there's a new theology being declared by Hak Jahan. I, 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 I'm just leave it right at that, because we have more, to, we have more. <laughs> okay, page 106, she says, before Reverend Moon taught his theology, I already knew it. Okay, now, Father uh, had basically discovered, you know, through his study of scripture and his own prayer and research uh, here and also in the spiritual world, Basically, he had discovered all the contents of the divine principle by 19, uh, 1945. She was two years old 
at the time that uh, that father had discovered all of that. So uh, I th she may have still been breastfed, but she knew everything. Yeah. Okay, she knew everything. Okay, I'm impressed. All right, let's keep on going here. Page 109. She states that after father's liberation from Hungnam death camp in 1950, he went to Busan. He found and he wrote down the word, and on that foundation, he had the qualification as the only begotten son to meet the only begotten daughter. Okay, so he worked really hard and he got to meet her. Okay. And then it says, okay, oh yeah, this is uh, from, think about this. Father went through all this effort to discover the truth. And she already knew it from birth. Then why didn't she write it down to age seven and save father all that trouble? I mean, just saying, you know. Okay, let's keep on going here. Page 112, 11 through 12, 112. The questioning attorney asked Hak Jahan whether there was ever a conversation between Hyunjinim and her as to who would lead the church after father died. Instead of giving a direct answer required in any legal deposition, she states, well, the circumstances did not allow that sort of question to arise because Sean at that time needed to grow more, much more. He was a male who was not complete. And even though I was his mother, he was not my equal as to carry on a conversation. Now, okay, let, let's break this down. He was, he was young. He was in his 20s, right? And uh, he was young. He was being appointed to an extremely important, challenging, and difficult position, right? You mothers out there, I want to ask you a question. Let's say that your son was appointed to an extremely important position that would be very difficult to actually fulfill. Would your attitude be, well, you know, you're, you're too young and immature to even talk with me about this, or would your attitude be, son, this is a huge responsibility. I want to help you. Let's talk about this. I want to help you to be victorious in your position because I love you. I want you to be completely victorious. Which one is it, A or B? I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Okay, page 112, 11 through 12. She, she berates and intimidates the attorney who's asking a legitimate question. She said, your questions are very ignorant. She goes on to state, I just said it was impossible to have that kind of conversation because we are not equals. So how could that be, that conversation? Hyunjin need to follow me unconditionally. He need to attend me. Okay, well, we've already discussed this. Page 113 through 114. Hak Chahan states, in the public forum, Reverend Moon has mentioned that he was the founder and that I was the number two founder. This meant that I, I was his equal in every respect. Now, you know, all of us assumed in the church that they were completely united, right? So if she's completely united with him, then you could say, yeah, whatever father says, mother's also saying the same thing. They're united, right? But there are indications from father himself in the last decade of his life where he made statements which rang alarm bells, okay? I'll, I'll just give you one example here. Father is giving a, a very kind of uh, important speech at the ABLE Women's UN Assembly on July 16, 2012. This is just two months before he went to Spirit World. And 
all of a sudden he just says, I raised up mother, but now there is no mother. There's no one in the position of Reverend Moon's wife. That's a strange statement to make, isn't it? I'll share another. This is from November 11, 2000. God has embraced women for the sake of true love, but they must absolutely obey God in order to stand in a position of his object. I am saying this for mother. Today I'm teaching you all of this. Do you understand? The age of mother-son cooperation is followed by the age of father-son cooperation. This is the end. The age of cooperation between mother and son is over. We have entered the age of cooperation between father and son. Therefore, although she has not cooperated in this, mother can receive all the blessings that are fruit of women having paid indemnity throughout history just by maintaining the standard of absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. This is kind of a strange statement, right? Say, although she's not cooperated in this. All right, just think about it. What is Father saying? There are difficulties in their relationship. All right, page 114. The questing attorney asks, now you understand, though, that before he died, the Reverend Moon identified Sean Moon as his successor? She responds, Successor is a word that should not be thrown around that easily. Like I said before, true parents, for true parents, there are no successors. Okay, so now what did, uh, what did, and, and let me just point out something here. Um, it is true that there's only one set of tr victorious true parents. That is true, okay? Yet, what did Father say about the position of successor? Okay, let's look what Father says about it. This is from 1985. While it is, uh, yeah, so it's, or I already said that. Okay, this is what Father said. There will always be a fiscal representative of the true Father here on earth. From one generation to another, there will always, there will be that axis on which the earth will turn. Therefore, all of you here on earth and all people in the generations to come will be centered upon the same axis. After the registration is done, true father will appoint his, his successor. That successor must be known to all the Unification Church, all the blessed couples, and the true parents' family. They must all unanim unanimously accept him. Okay. Father said there will be a successor. Okay, so... I guess you have to pick who, who you want to listen to. I don't know. Uh, all right, and then page 115. The questing attorney asks, did you ever hear Reverend Moon identify Sean Moon as his successor and heir? She says, I never heard him say that. Okay. Uh, then she says, I know that you're preparing a video clip to show me. However, that doesn't, that clip is not an indication that Reverend Moon was appointing or naming Sean as his heir. It's just a warning to other sons. Okay. All right. Well, here are the statements that she, she thinks are just a warning to other sons. Let's read the first one. This is from April 16, 2008. Today at this time, there must only be one line of authority, the center centered on Korea or on the world over the entire Unification Church will stretch out and become larger. From now, I can leave someone in charge of my work on my behalf. Currently, there's no one among our church members who surpasses Hyunjin in a standard of faith or in any other way. Do you understand? I'm appointing him. Okay, and then here's another statement uh, the Father made, it, it written, it written uh, words from 2010. 
God is the one king of kings. There's only one set of true parents. All families are the people who share a single lineage and are the children of one heavenly kingdom. Moreover, the command center of cosmic peace and unity is the absolute unique command center. Its representative and heir is Hyunjin Moon. Anybody else who claims such a position would be a heretic and one who brings things to destruction. The above content is True Parents Proclamation. And then after he writes this, he says, and you see this on the video, the representative and inheritor is Shunjin Moon. Anybody else is a heretic and destroyer. You just follow everything. It contains everything. Okay, that's what Father said. So actually, I'd like to play the video now. Uh, Mr. Sun, yeah. Okay, so I, I want you to watch the video. Jogio, Thank 
최후의 고불을 넘어 승자의 대신자가 되고 승자의 정사 상석자의 사참 심정 뿌리의 회계자리를 상속받아가지고 하나를 모실 수 있는 제상 여러분 해방의 심정 세계가 여러분이 참부모도 그 일을 가지면 여러분 탕감하고 또 심정 세계의 준비 1차적인 가인의 배 경계서를 힘차게 넘겨 넘어야 할 길이 남아있는 것을 아셔야 되겠다 아시겠어요? 그러니까 이 자리에 말씀의 내용을 주지만 또 부모님이 간 그런 실체적으로 행동할 수 있는 실체 권력 여기서 넘겨주는 이런 자리니까 물론 말씀도 귀하지만 부모님의 사심도 귀하지만 하나님의 사심에 신조교를 넘고 남을 수 있는 대신자 왕자 왕자 대가또 상속자가 되어드는 신령을 갖기를 부탁드리겠습니다 아시겠어요? 네 자, 그런 의미에서 이 물건을 전사에게 True parents prayerfully ask that the Unification family support President h y u n g Jin Moon and his wife so that they can become one with the word and become heaven's representatives and heirs. Okay, so I just want to make a comment about this. So, In the first part, you could see the father really uh, had so much hope and excitement about appointing h y u n j i n i m right? And he says, you'll become the pillars, the, the pillars of the, fu- of, exactly, the, of the future, the future world. And then he gives the eight great textbooks, and he gives them to his son, and he says... You know, protect these and, 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 and bring these into, into action and reality, and of course to all of us, not just him, right? So, of course, what did Hak Jahan do? After Father went to spiritual world, she said, you don't have to, you don't have to read all these eight great textbooks. I, I'm, I'm going to edit the uh, Chan s a n g y a n g because uh, allegedly there are mistranslations and it's too long and so on. So I'm going to change the words and take out the things I don't like in there. And basically rejecting Father's words. Okay, so you need to understand what's actually going on here. Okay, Uh, can we play the the other one? I want to just show just a minute, a brief part of the... uh, the inauguration ceremony that took place three times. Father did the, the um, anointing of h y u n j i n i m in, uh, I think it was January 15th, and then on January 31st, and then he flew to the Uni- United States and did a third an- anointing ceremony in the United States in the same day, <laughs> actually, it's amazing. Now, if he had done it four or five times, maybe people would believe him. I don't know, okay? <laughs> anyway, let, let's just play this. Okay, I just want you to see this. This is something that many have not even seen. but something that we've also, of course, many times alluded to, and it is a historical, historical ceremony. The actual title of the ceremony was The Great Coronation of the Authority of Liberation of God, the King of Kings. This was held on three different occasions, three different occasions, in the c h e n j a n g u n g Palace. It was the coronation of God's kingship with all the different crowns of the world. As you can see here, representatives of the tribes were bringing crowns. 
the eight religious leaders were bringing gifts to bestow upon true parents. It is the first time, and this is the attendance coming in. It's the first time that anybody wore the crown and the robe of true parents. First time ever. Father made us wear the crown and the robe that you see there. That was his crown I had to wear. That crown is platinum. It is encrusted with jewels. And I don't know what type of jewels, blue jewels and pink jewels, rubies. And he made us walk behind true parents until the stage. And in this ceremony, Father released this blessing. I'm going to pause it there so I can see the blessing. This blessing is a tremendous blessing. This was in 2009. In Korean it says, That's what it says. And what that means is, in the coronation, the Chugishik is coronation. In the coronation of the settlement of cosmic and earthly parents or true parents, authority, Sabbath authority, holy authority. The blessing of true parents is passed down to this couple. That is the blessing the Father read. Now that he prayed over us. These are actually the crowns that we had to wear. Now you think about it from my perspective, I didn't want, <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable situation for me because I had all my siblings in the stage in the auditorium. The uh, father anointed his youngest son, Hyun to be the successor. You know, honestly speaking, I, I, I was waiting by my telephone. I, I was waiting for True Father to call me. <laughs> I, I waited a long time by the phone. I, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure Father's going to call me, and he's going to ask me who he should appoint as his successor. I waited a long time. <laughs> <You're waiting>. <laughs> <laughs> he never called. <laughs> No, I'm not. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't really mean that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you can see, Father chose whom he thought, whom God showed him, okay? That's my point. All right, let's go back to this uh, deposition. Uh, okay, so then she continues. In order to become the heir in the proclamation, there need to be my signature as well. But in the proclamation, my signature is not there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, let me, um, hold on. All right, one second. All right. In order to become the heir in the proclamation, there needed to be my signature as well. But in the proclamation, my signature is not there. Without two parents' signature, this proclamation cannot be considered as valid. Okay. And that's, that's quite interesting. I mean, he's talking about this proclamation that she was helping him to write. She's right there next to him, and he's writing... Uh, 
you know, that Shenzhen Moon is, uh, is the successor in, in air. Anybody else would be a heretic and a destroyer. He's writing that, okay? And I, it, okay, for, well, Father didn't, did not ask her, do, do you want to sign this too? Father I assumed that she was in agreement with him, that he's signing this, right? right. Okay. This is like, oh, okay, I didn't know that uh, Father did everything wrong. He, he forgot to ask Hak Jahan to sign it too. Okay, he, did, he, he forgot for like 40 or 50 years. This is really interesting and kind of very strange, I have to say this. And then she says on page 118, two parents do not specifically target one child and say, this is my successor. And then my, my comment is, she may say so, but that is precisely what God and true father did. Okay, so I guess you have an argument with God and true father about that. Okay. Okay, page 121, the attorney asks, but having sat there and watched these 54 seconds of the video clip, would you agree with me that Reverend Moon is saying in the clip that he needs to appoint a successor to carry on the work after he dies? Hak Jahan states, that wasn't my view. Okay, page 126. The question attorney asks, so Mrs. Moon, I'm asking you, do you hear Reverend Moon saying that he's appointing Sean Moon in that video clip I just played for you? She responds, the true father cannot at his own discretion make that decision without my consent. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go, one more. Okay, page 126. The true father cannot, at his own discretion, yeah, make that decision without my consent. I am the true parent. The true parent does not consist of the father. It also includes mother, and the mother has more authority. So I should have been the one. It should have come from me. Okay, now she's saying that father shouldn't have signed it even at all. That's what she seems to be saying here. All right, and then page 127 Uh, how do you expect me to make a decision from that? I kept, kept telling him I mentioned about true parent, and the true mother has the most authority. Life came from the true mother, and true mother nurtured them. Uh, and then she says below, the, the, so the question is, the video shows Reverend saying that he, and then she, she answers, the video clip was not completed. It only shows the father's side. It does not show the mother's side. So what is she saying? She's saying, you know, the family fed loves to say like a million times, two parents are one. I mean, I, I, you look, just, you don't believe me? Just go on their website and, but, but you can see here, two parents, Hak Jahan and, and her husband, they were not one, according to what, what she's saying here. She's saying that there, there isn't one, one view, there are two views, and that she did not agree with what Father was doing. That's what she's saying now. Okay, I don't know if she mentioned this to Father at the time. She seemed to be helping him to write this, you know, helping him to write this. But... It shows the father's side, but it does not show the mother's side. So we're, she's saying that there, there's not one view. There are two views, and, and the two views are different from each other. Do you hear what I'm saying, family fed? Do you understand what she's saying here? Okay. Page uh, 151 to 152. She says, if Hyunjin does not fulfill his responsibility, meaning accepting her new theology, 
true parents cannot appoint him as a central figure. Then the attorney asks, what does Sean Moon have to do to fulfill that responsibility? She answers, his attitude towards parents, especially to true mother, not the true father, he should offer absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. Without that, he cannot be a central figure. Okay, so she's basically saying he needs to be absolutely obedient to her, not true father. And that was, the, that was the horrific position that he was put in. Think about this for a second. You love your parents your whole life. You trust them. You believe that they are completely one in an extremely difficult, unbelievable responsibility and mission to fulfill on earth. Okay. And, and then they, there's been several ceremonies where they've asked you to carry this, this mission into the future after father's passing into spiritual world. And then you're confronted with a mother who says, the hell with what father said. You got to follow me. That's what his mother said to him. Can you imagine being in his position? You know, when, when, uh, Hyunjin M, you know, revealed these things in 2015. Everyone was shocked. How could you possibly say these things about your mother? Your mother is absolutely united with true father, and you're an unfilial son. But this was the crap that he was dealing with. Can you imagine the betrayal? Then she says, if you reject the Holy Spirit, then there's no forgiveness. So let's, let's break down that, that statement for a second. Let's reflect on the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit leads believers to Jesus Christ, right? That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit guides us and helps us and sometimes comforts us in, in our faith and guides us to Christ. The Holy Spirit doesn't say, you know, that Jesus guy, he makes mistakes. You know, you can't really trust what he says. He, he got things wrong, you know, is that what the Holy Spirit does? No, it's ridiculous. She's claiming to be something, but her own testimony shows she's the exact opposite of, the, of a Holy Spirit. Okay, page 159. Like I said before, Sean was not, was not perfect. Also, the person who created the nation of cosmic peace and unity was not the true father. It was true mother. That's why I did not sign that. So, okay. Or it could also be translated, I think, who opened the nation of cosmic peace and unity. That was true father. Okay, so anyway, she's saying it wasn't father. You know, I, I opened, I created, or I opened it. Uh, and then she... All right, that's what she's saying. All right, fine. Okay, page 165. Did Reverend Moon confirm by this June 5, 2010 document that Sean Moon was his representative and heir to assume control of the church after he died? This is what she says. That may have been the father's intention, but I told you already that it was not my intention. I mean that it was not a mutual decision to create that. She did not agree. I mean, for what she's saying, if you, if you believe what she's saying. Right. 
put, your, put yourself in father's position for a second. Imagine that you are reaching the end of your life and you're trying desperately to fulfill God's will. And you know that your wife is going off in another direction. But you're trying to finish the course and make a complete offering to God. Think about what Father was going through at this time. He, he, knew, he knew what was going on. I already, I already read you a few statements that he, he even in the year 2000, that was 12, year, 12 years before he passed on. Okay, page 166 through 7. The attorney asked, did you have any conversations with Reverend Moon before he died about this document? She replies, I've been telling True Father from a long time ago that it was not yet time to raise the son. Therefore, since a long time ago, I objected to the idea. And they said, that's why I didn't. I disagreed. I did not sign the document. Okay. You disagreed with Father for maybe 10 at least 10 years, you, you did not, you are not, you're, you're not agreeing with Father. That's what she's saying. She was not united with Father, at least for 10 or more years. Page 204. She's asked whether someone who's using, okay, this is from the next day, by the way, uh, March 26th. She's asking whether someone who's following Reverend Moon's teachings would also have to use the Tongil symbol. She answered, why should I ask that person's conscience? If a person does not follow the teachings of true parents, just because Reverend Moon had given permission or had said, had mentioned it, just because Pastor Moon had allowed it, that person's not allowed. So she's basically saying, Father may have given permission for people to use the Tongil mark, but I didn't. That's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. Okay, so, okay, I finished. I mean, you can read it for yourself. I mean, there's more content, but the, these are kind of key, the key statements. So, honestly, I want to thank Hak Jahan. Thank you so much for... Of course, she doesn't say this in her speeches, okay? None of this is in her speeches that she, I mean, I mean, in most of her speeches, uh, and I'm not talking about the um, speeches, I'm talking about speeches that actually come out of her own mouth, okay, during the last 10 years. She'll talk about the blessing in 1960, and then she, she won't mention who she, who she got married to. She would not mention the name of the man that she married in 1960. It's amazing. Okay. Anyway, uh, the, but I, I want to thank you. Hak Jahan, I want to thank you that at least in this legal deposition, you could tell the truth about what you actually believe. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, because now we can see what you really think, what you really believe, not the propaganda, not the long speeches that are written by somebody else. This is from your own mouth. So I want to thank you for doing that, so that all, brother, all people, unificationists, many of whom gave much of their lives because they believed in true parents. They can see what you really believe, what you really think, and make your choice. Look, I believe in freedom of religion. Okay, the First Amendment to U.S. Constitution says we have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And to family, family brothers and sisters, if you want to believe in new religion centering on Hak Jahan's proclamations, hey, go for it. I'm not stopping you. Look. Look, you can see what she teaches, and if, if that, you think that this is uh, the same teaching that, that, that you heard about and that you, uh, I mean, I think it's a bunch of crap. I think it's a pile of horse manure, but if you want to believe it, 
I am not stopping you, but don't pretend, don't pretend that she is united with true father, Sam Young Moon. Don't lie to us. That's what I'm saying here, okay? Don't pretend that she is united with him, that she... In the, I better stop. Okay. All right. All right. Now, okay. Thank you. All right. So I just want to wrap up. <sighs> okay. So let's go back to the question, why does Christ need to return? So we saw in the fall, uh, Eve was tempted by Lucifer. She fell. So... When, when Christ returns, Christ has to be absolutely faithful to God, right? Not, not be pulled down, not be manipulated, not be seduced, whatever, okay, by, by a false, you know, you know a full, a satanic teaching. So that's what Christ needs to do, right? And as we said before, Christ already came 2,000 years ago, so there's something that he has to do when he comes back. He's not going to come back and do the same thing that he did 2,000 years ago, right? And essentially, it is to establish God's lineage on the earth. God wants to have unfallen sons and daughters on the earth who fulfill the three, who are not born in sin, who do not need, need to be forgiven, Right? who are born without sin and fulfill the three blessings. That's, what, that's the whole purpose of the second coming of Christ. Then my question is this. Who is a person who wants to reject God's lineage on the earth? I, I, I'm just asking the question. What kind of person wants to reject God's lineage on the earth. Father chose his... Do, do you know that before uh, Father appointed Hyunjin him, he asked him th three times, have you ever fallen with, have you ever fallen with, with somebody else before, you, before your, ble your marriage, blessing to y Yonim? Uh, the, well, actually, this is actually even before he, he matched them. He, Father was very concerned about this. And... You know, fortunately, he and Yonim, they were pure. They did save themselves for their blessing. And that was a great victory, actually, for the true family's lineage, right? So, but we need to understand that, look, we could think in a very horizontal way. We could think, you know, I, I think, you know, many... Like you, I probably looked at like hundreds of pictures of father and mother together, you know, uh, over my years in the church, and, I, and I, I felt affection and respect and love for them. So we could think in a kind of a horizontal way, or we could think from God's perspective about what God, God's purpose is, about God's provincial purpose for sending Christ to return to the earth and what he's supposed to do. And then we can think about what this, this woman is actually doing now. I'm, I'm not asking you to think about how you felt you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. I'm asking you to think now based on what she is saying now. Where is she? Is she supporting God's purpose? Or is she asking people to worship her and listen to her words, not Father's words? It's pretty obvious, okay? Now, there's a legal deposition. I didn't make this up. If I were a re really creative novelist, I don't think I can make this up, okay? <laughs> okay. I, I think the fiction writers are having a really hard time right now because reality is much more unbelievable than anything you could come up with, okay? Look, look at what she is doing. Look at what she is saying. All right. 
Now, I want to conclude by reading some of the words of uh, Hyun Shil Khan, True Mother Hyun Shil Khan. So, first I want to read a statement that she made uh, okay, well, let me just read this. And th this is from her book. Th this is actually an incredible book, by the way. The words of True Mother Hyun Shil Khan. So thank you, Carrie Williams, for working on this. It's a great book. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, let's read this together. The purpose of faith for Unification Church members is to attend the lineage of God. But the family fed is right now is rejecting father's lineage and is denying that lineage. They have rejected the succession structure that was established by our true father, the Messiah and Savior. They have denied father's succession and now they say they will decide their own successor by something they call the Supreme Council. They say the Supreme Council is composed of the leaders of the family federation and they say that they will choose the person that they want as father's successor. So they say that no one will be the successor unless he's someone who's to the to liking of the members of this, this council. In other words, this Supreme Council reigns above whoever is to be the successor. Okay, I'm not going to say anything about it. All right, let me just read one other uh, talk from one other talk she gave on June 8th. She's talking about True Father in the, er the early days when he was in a, in a shack, a cardboard shack. Father would rise at 3 o'clock every morning and pray. As I think... As I think back on how Father prayed back then, I remember that he prayed in a very desperate and urgent way. He was actually weeping, shedding tears throughout his prayers. He would say in his prayer, God, my Father, I remember that I made a promise to you. And I remember that moment when I made the, the, this promise, Father would say, God, I promised you that I would accomplish your will by a certain time, but it's taking longer than I had anticipated. The time is passing. I have not yet been able to accomplish your will. I am deeply sorry for that. He would pray and he would weep as he prayed this way. Now, I want to read just one more thing. And this is from the last... The, the last uh, last letter is the last letter that she, she wrote to Sanctuary Family Worldwide from October 8, 2018. So, here we go. All right. We established this deep pond of love, but we were never able to love each other. So she's actually talking about True Father. And this is after Shanjanim blessed them together. I, let me just make a comment about that issue. Okay. Th think about this for a second. True Father had Hak Jahan by his side for... 52 years, okay. And in the last decade of his life, he, he, he realizes that she's going off in another direction, all right? And so this is a very, very difficult situation, right? To put it mildly. So then he passes away and Hak Jahan spreads her new religion and Hyun Jin is put it, actually many people are asking us here at, at Unification Sanctuary, okay, you're saying that Hak Jahan is failing, has failed, what does that do to true parents? And honestly speaking, I did not know the answer. 
I, 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 I wanted to believe that God, God had an answer, but I did not know what, what that answer was, to be honest. And then Hyun Shil Khan comes to America at the age of 90 years old, I believe, and the family feds trying to capture her and lock her up in her, her room so she can't leave. Can you imagine being 90 years old and coming to, to America? You don't know what's, I mean, she, she has guts. I have to say one thing about Shanjo, she has guts, okay? Anything else, I mean, she, at least she has that, that's for sure. And she has a lot more anyway. So, and then Shanjanim crowns her together with true father in the spiritual world. And that was an amazing, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I didn't see that coming. Okay, maybe you did. You might be smarter than me, but I did not see that. But anyway, he blessed them together, okay? So that's the context for what she, what she wrote here. So let me read this. Okay. All right, here we go. We established this deep bond of love, but we're never able to love each other as we would like. So I gather up my courage and said... And this is the true father, teacher, I love you. His response was, my love for Hyunshil, Hyunshil is a hundred times greater than your love for me. I said that seemed like an exaggeration with a, a little lie mixed in. <laughs> She's kind of like flirting, I think. <laughs> he looked shocked and said, when you go to the spirit world, it will all become clear. That will be a fearful time. Then I said, teacher, I will not confirm this even in the spirit world. I have believed your words absolutely down to the end of each of my hairs. Why would I at the end turn myself into someone who disbelieves? That would be fearful. Even in the other world, I will believe your words without confirmation. And then uh, father responds, our Shanshil is one who believes well. The one who is closest to me in the world, cast me aside and left. But Hyun Shil Khan was one of those who comforted me, saying, your teachings are true. You are also the one who created the Unification Church with me. Even when you were expelled from school, you comforted me. We were teacher and disciple, but by the desire of Father in heaven, we have become eternal husband and wife. And then she, she returns, I am making many mistakes because I cannot e see my own writing. Please forgive me. As husband and wife, we will love all peoples of all countries with true love. And live for their sakes. We will build the true world, the original world without sin that God created for us in the beginning. If God is with us and Jesus and the spirit world cooperate with us, there's nothing we cannot do. Everyone, let us believe. It will be accomplished to the extent we believe. We need certainty and conviction. Anyway, I think I'll stop there. But uh, it's a great... It's a great uh, letter that she wrote to all of us. So despite the miserable, pathetic, disgusting deposition that I just read to you, we have to remember that God and, and true parents, true father Sam Young Moon and true mother Hyun Shil Kang, they are victorious. They are victorious in heart and love and faith. So that's why I believe that we have a great future. Okay, we, we Hyunjin just established the uh, beginning of Chunpyeon here in North America. That's a great, great victory, right? And three of his children have been blessed. 
and starting their families too, right? So we have a great foundation, a great victory, and then the future. Look, if you wanted to look at all the bad things happening in America and the world, <laughs> you could become pretty, pretty depressed. But we do not need to be depressed because, because of God, ex God, God exists. And we have true father and true mother, they exist. And they have been victorious. Can I get an amen from you? Okay. Okay, that's the good news. Okay, thank you. Okay.